Please pray with me for a moment. God, send your Holy Spirit to us that we may be able to listen to what you are saying and hear the peace you are speaking to mm. us. Mm. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, people of St. Martin's. Good morning. It is a pleasure to be here with you today. I find it sometimes helpful um, as a practice to take a couple of mindful breaths at the beginning of something. Okay. It helps me arrive, and I'd like to invite you to join me in that. Take a couple of mindful breaths with me. Let's do something like a count to three for our our inhale and then pause for a minute and then three for our exhale let's do a couple of those also want to suggest Thich Nhat Han, the Buddhist teacher suggests letting a little smile just a little upturn on the corners of your mouth while you breathe in and out it makes it feel a bit different I think you'll find so let's breathe in together let's breathe and hold and breathe out Breathe in and hold and breathe out. Thank you. So I want to welcome you this morning and I want to thank you for wel welcoming me and everyone around you. Thank you for welcoming everyone around us here to this time of prayer and meditation, uh, reflection this morning. And I also wanna remind you to welcome yourself. That's partly why we have to take a breath. So we actually show up, welcome ourselves to be here. There's an intimate moment at the beginning of our gospel reading for today. And I want to invite you to imagine it with me, to picture it in your mind's eye. I'll reread the very beginning of the gospel. Jesus was praying hmm. in a certain place. And after he had finished, hmm. one of his disciples hmm. said to him, hmm. Lord, Teach us to pray. Mm -hmm. Jesus is praying. I picture him outside a short distance away from, from the, the disciple in the story. Maybe the other disciples were also there. I imagine Jesus is quiet and still. Maybe he's sitting on a rock or a tree stump or a bench. And he has done this thing we call prayer. He, he turns his attention to the realities of his life before God, somehow with God, in the presence of God. He gathers himself. He's focused. A kind of awareness, in a kind of awareness. He centers within his heart and within this awareness in a kind of openness an inner attentiveness, which is a kind of rest. It's a beautiful thing for me to, to observe Jesus in prayer, mm. to imagine Jesus mm. in prayer. Um, sometimes I get these in the mail, these brochures about expensive trips, you know, around the world, Viking cruises and so forth. I thought as I hung out with this little piece of the gospel story, if there were a travel destination mm -hmm. where I could go to observe Jesus in mm -hmm. prayer, mm -hmm. I'd go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I thought, hmm. well, we just did that. Mm -hmm. So I guess maybe that place is right here. We're already there. And it can be wherever we are. 
So one of Jesus' disciples is watching him as he prays. I like that moment, to think about that. It's a bit of a distance away. Who knows what he's doing? Maybe this, or she, the disciple, is, is sweeping the ground, or maybe raking leaves, or, or washing the dishes, I don't know. Or maybe just looking at the sky. But the disciple notices that Jesus is praying. Maybe we could say that in these last few minutes anyway, that disciple is us. We're, we're noticing Jesus praying. And it's a pleasure. Well, some time passes while Jesus prays, and then he finishes. How do we know he's finished? Well, maybe he moves his, his body in some different way. He shows he's changed in position. Or like when somebody finishes reading a book, they, they sometimes close the book and then look up and like they're thinking about it. Somehow, anyway, he shows he's shifting his attention. Maybe he looks around, maybe he stands up. And then he comes over to join the disciple who's been watching him from a short distance away. And they look at each other, maybe they smile. I've, I've been in moments like that at silent retreats. You've been in a long time of meditation or something and you meet by the table where the coffee is or a few nuts and you give each other a little smile, but you're not supposed to talk, so you just smile a little and move on. But here, they have that little encounter in that quiet moment, and then the disciple breaks the silence, and he says, Lord, teach us to pray. We'd like to learn to pray. We heard that last week. I think that's like ice or something coming out of there. <laughs> Thank you, Joanne. So he says, will you teach me to pray? That seems like such a vulnerable and delicate request to me. He's revealing his heart. This, and this moment, this request, sums up for me something really deep and important about the heart of life. The heart of who we are and where we are and what we long for. So first, observing Jesus in prayer might awaken in us a longing to pray like it did for this disciple. Or it helped the disciple name the longing. It might awaken in us a longing to gather ourselves and to be aware of our life, our world, our time. And in that awareness to somehow be present before God and with God. Where can we go to learn to pray? Who can we ask to help us learn to pray? It could be that when you see Jesus in prayer in this story, you have a, a different need that you want to bring to him. I want to acknowledge that too. Maybe, maybe you have a different question. So that I just want to ask this morning, what is your question? And what would you like to ask the spirit of Jesus to teach you? That could be a key to your vocation. Well, this disciple's question, I think, has always been my question. When I came to the Episcopal Church, I don't think I really understood what I was seeking, but I knew I was seeking something. As I see it now, I think I came to learn to pray. And the people who gathered together as the Episcopal Church welcomed me into that practice, the practice of praying. And they supported me in my desire to pray, longing to pray. The practice of, of life in our church has taught me that prayer is a spiritual path. It's a way of living, a way of expressing our trust in God, or as is sometimes the case for me, a way of expressing 
the little shred of desire I have to trust in God and love God. I came to the Episcopal Church just after I turned 30, which is a startlingly long time ago for me. <laughs> It'll be 40 years ago this fall, this winter, this, in a few months. And I think when I came, I was asking with the disciple in this story for somebody to teach me to pray. I joined a, a Zen Buddhist meditation group at the same time, a little before actually, for the same reason, I think. Same question, same longing. I was saying, teach me how to base my life on a practice of prayer. In our life together, part of this Episcopal community, I have learned at some level how to pray. And I'm still learning, but I've learned at some level. This week I was startled to recognize, well, what I was seeking has in fact been given to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's been one of the most important learnings of my life. And I still long to keep learning. When I read this lesson, I realized, oh, I still have that longing. Mm. Teach me to pray. In each new phase of life, in each new twist and turn of the world, in each new revelation of the suffering in the world, I need to and long to learn again how to pray now, how to pray here, in this time, in this part of my life, in this place, in these circumstances. How to be with God in the life I'm in. I feel like we as Episcopalians could describe ourselves as a community of people who are learning to pray our way through life. Mm -hmm. And if that's true, then this gospel moment, this little sliver of this gospel story, could be a, a foundational kind of explanatory story for us. Most of us aren't here. Some, some churches are gathered because, of people sh because people share convictions about certain doctrines. I think most of us are here because we're, we're committed to learning to pray together. We want to learn to pray before God and with God and with each other. We seek to be shaped by God as we pray, to allow our prayer to shape our minds and shape our hearts and shape our action in the world. We're here, I think, to be welcomed and to be forgiven mm -hmm. and to be guided mm -hmm. and redirected and to be loved. And that happens in our life of prayer. And our being here for this practice offers an opportunity and a support for other people to, to, to recognize and to act on their desire to learn to pray. So one thing I experienced this week as I was preparing for this morning is, the, is gratitude for the Episcopal Church and how it has invited me onto this journey I sought and mm. needed mm. and longed for. It has invited me to be part of this community of prayer. We gather, we pray, lots of prayers, lots of words, more than you can possibly take in, but it creates a space for us to pray, and we support each other in learning to pray our way through life. And I am so grateful for you folks at St. Martin's, who for over 20 years now have always been here when I could come on Sunday morning. I knew you would be here to support mm. me in prayer. Mm. <clears throat> and don't we need that now? Yes, sir. This week, I've been talking to a few people about the possibility of maybe doing a meditation group midweek here in the fall, maybe six or eight weeks of a med time to, to do silent meditation together. 
maybe learn a little bit about that. And I was talking to Janine Fellings from this church about that this week. And she said, I talked to her partly because we did this years ago in Lent. And Janine has every once in a while over the years said to me, you need to have a meditation group again. Mm -hmm. And so I called her this week and she said, Rick, we need this now. Mm -hmm. I need this in this time. She talked about all the difficult, difficult troubles in our country and our world. And isn't that right? Don't we need to be people who can take all that in and pray? Hmm. Yes, sir. Part of our vocation is to be present within our own suffering and within the suffering of the world to the mystery of the love of God. And all of that, all the suffering and all the blessing, leads us, I think, to say with this anonymous disciple in our gospel reading today, hmm. Lord, teach us to pray. I feel so grateful to be able to share that with you and to share this life with you. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.